I'm Douglas Saunders. And I'm Nicholas Cambada. And together we run 81 Tall Studios. What's the definition of virtual reality? I think virtual reality, to someone that's never experienced it before, that someone, to someone that's never, that has no clue of what it means, I think virtual reality really is the creation and simulation of environments that you can interact with and experience. Virtual reality is simply the next way that we are gonna tell stories that take it a whole step beyond film and photos and uh, traditional storytelling methods. We've been engineering technology where you're going to be able to stand up and walk around and interact with an element. Um, that requires uh, LiDAR scanning, programming in the Unreal Engine, um, essentially combining real life uh, captures of actual environments and objects and actors with also um, game engine technology. Uh, it's certainly a, a next level, but that's where we see things going. That's where we see people getting very excited. There's gaming that can take advantage of virtual reality. There are movie experiences that can take advantage of virtual reality. Uh, social experiences. So obviously with gaming, you're gonna have interactivity, which is absolutely way beyond anything, you know, any of us have experienced before. Yeah, they have games in the Steam store that you can fly spaceships and look around like this out of your cockpit, and like you're actually there, which is amazing. But you know, you're talking about spherical video. Right. You know, yeah. you, you, you can only like look around from a central nodal point. Everything, whether again, it's the simplest commercial or, or film uh, or game, it's all moving towards interactivity. So virtual reality, again, is, is something that's, it exists right now where there's limited amounts, some experiences where you can simply look around in a 360 degree space, and others where you can walk around and interact with your environment. All you really need is a 360 camera or a, a cluster of cameras put together that can create a sphere of uh, visual information and a VR headset. There's a bunch out there from cardboards to cell phone apps to high-end uh, headsets like the Samsung Gear VR. People may wonder, now, why now, right? Um, well, we live in a place where, if you can imagine, you know, Nick reminds me, 10 years ago, this didn't exist. iPhone smartphones, and now we have smart devices in all of our pockets where you have accelerometers and a high definition screen that you can download a free app, something like Little Star, for example, or uh, Facebook spherical content or YouTube spherical content, and actually stream live, push a button, and hold it and experience with any smartphone. That's an incredible thing. That's literally, think about that. Virtual reality is here for free for the masses, and I think that's, that's what it took, you know, for technology to get to the point where now already you have it in your pocket the way to experience virtual reality. Now, there are ways to light, and you're gonna to have to resolve to several things. Either you're going to creatively leave lights in the scene and just kind of give it that Hollywood movie set vibe, or you can leave a light in and you have an amazing composite person that will work in programs like After Effects or Nuke that will render out, essentially clone stamp out a light or lights, uh, or you shoot uh, with a camera array where the front half of the cameras are shooting and the back half is not, and you have lights behind uh, and over the camera like this, and then you shoot a backplate and you just render in the backplate. But that only works if you're in a very controlled environment where you wouldn't have windows or light changes or objects change. You're striving for the most realistic image that's the closest thing to what the person would experience if they were really there. A lot of situations when you're outdoors, natural lighting is just the way you're gonna go because that's what it was when you were there. One of your biggest issues is gonna be, your enemy is gonna be parallax. So uh, think about what you do with your eye. You know, you could do this and then you could do this. And I can actually see my interview camera go from here to there. And so what happens is with each camera angle, you have a perspective shift. Now from four to five feet away, a VR camera won't be really terribly affected by that. But you try and shoot within a car, for example, which is one of our specialties. Um, oh wow, a lot of issues there. You're gonna have missing dashboard parts. You're gonna have a weird broken jagged windshield. Your driver maybe like looks like he's gone through two different dimensions, he's split in half. Uh, there's a lot of issues in regards to parallax and camera placement that we've gotten really good at it and we know how to also deal with the inevitable issues that we just can't avoid by fixing in post using composite. Um, but camera placement and uh, planning our actors, uh, that is probably one of our other biggest challenges that we've had to learn and educate ourselves on. The biggest issue is when you add motion, any type of motion to virtual reality, it becomes infinitely much harder. The escalation of how much more difficult it becomes in shooting and in post-production becomes much harder as soon as you go from 
things that are stationary around you to things that are moving around you. Whether you're in the passenger seat of a car or you know, you're now being you know, moved on the back of a truck, things go way out of control as soon as you add motion to the element. Virtual reality changed all the rules on how to film and how to capture and create these experiences. We had to unlearn everything and then relearn everything uh, from the ground up on how to shoot and how to edit and also how to educate and sort of guide the audience or the client through the entire process. The most important thing is the immersion. How, how immersive is it? How much are the people buying into this world that you're creating for them? And so the more you cut, the more you change the scenes, the more you change the camera position, it can be jarring. So one of the things we sort of had to learn and we tell people is to sort of slow down the entire process of how you shoot. And as far as scenes, you really need to be able to shoot them as sort of one takes, uh, where everything's happening almost like a stage play. That's sort of how I equate it, is you're really creating theater for the person that's gonna experience it. 